Good morning, everyone. My name is Bree Hanepka, and I am the executive director for the Royal Sass Museum. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is Treaty 4 territory, the ancestral and territory, traditional territory of the Cree, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and the home of the Métis. We acknowledge the land in an act of reconciliation to those whose traditional territories we are on. We acknowledge those who have shared the land before us, those who continue to share the land, and those who will share the land in the future. We further acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past. And we are committed to moving forward in partnership with Indigenous nations in the spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. It is my honor to welcome you this morning and thank you for joining us to recognize the children who have never returned home and survivors of residential schools, as well as their families and communities. This morning, our presenters will continue our learning journey towards truth and reconciliation. I would like to thank the Saskatchewan Teachers Federation for their renewed support of our traditional knowledge keepers program here at the RSM. Their support allows us to work with Indigenous partners on events like today and other activities throughout the year to expand and deepen our knowledge and understanding of Indigenous history and culture. I would now like to ask Knowledge Keeper Tim Petra and Brad Belgard to come to the stage. Good day, everybody. My name is Tim Putra, as they announced. I'm, before we do anything, I'm, we always start out with a prayer. I'm not a fluent speaker. I spent 10 years in a residential school institution. I call it an institution because in the name of education, that's how they colonized us and broke the spirit within the child. But uh, let's get on with the prayer and then hopefully we can convey a nice positive message. So in your own ways, in your own faith, join me in this prayer. <laughs> Lay with chosen it on Kashla, me, Chakin on Kashla, we own be a Tanya Sapa, was the Italian Luto, we own your pottery, eat talk of Gatting a scar, Tishinatanka, one black let's cut on Kashina, in I own Chimaka. Me, Chakin Kashla, me, Tonkashla, the Inca Duta, Chumpanicha, one king of Shila. Imaki Api, Na Oyate, Tonkashla, City Regina, Mustra, Tonkashla, Le Kulas, Tonkashla. Museum Regina, Tonkashle, Le Tiwais, Tonkashle, Le Wachosne, Woshke, Woshunki, Wuyushke, Wuyusape. I pray today, Grandfather, and ask that you look down upon each and one, every one of my relatives in the room. Watch over our children, our families, our loved ones as we leave them behind. Put a blessing on good health, happiness, help, and understanding we all need to get by in a good way. I pray that the message that I may be, be given may not be taken out of context, that we can create a better tomorrow, a better future for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and those yet to come. For without your kindness and pity, we can go nowhere. I apologize if I say anything that may offend anybody. It is my intent. How will Makashkanyas and Mitakyas and all my relations? Thank you very much, Knowledge, Ke Knowledge Keeper Petra, for your blessing. So I thought I would just introduce our uh, facilitators this morning. So Brad Belgard is a proud Nakota Cree member of the Little Black Bear Nation who calls Regina home. He is a nationally published journalist, having written articles featured in the Globe and Mail, 
Toronto Star, Ottawa Citizen, Huffington Post, and CBC. Also known as Info Red, he is a nationally recognized hip hop artist, having performed on national television as well as in Vancouver in the 20, 20, no, 2009 Cultural Olympiad. Brad is a CBC Future 40 Award winner, Nietzsche Gear role model, and recipient of the Queen Elizabeth II Platinum Jubilee Medal. And life speaker Tim Petra is a member of the Muscopeating First Nation and resides on reserve. Team, Tim is Lakota Dakota is in, and is enriched in ceremonial customs and traditions. A widower of his late wife of many beautiful years together, they have two sons and several grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Tim lives a sober lifestyle and is a residential school survivor. Tim has served his Lakota people as Sundance chief and taken the time to learn and earn the seven sacred rights of the Lakota as a Lakota Dakota man. Tim su successfully developed his diploma in business, sorry, successfully completed his diploma in business administration from SIIT in Regina. His passion is to practice his traditional lifestyle and provide ceremonial guidance of his enriched Lakota culture. He continues his teachings through community engagement by facilitating traditional life skills. Tim has traveled across the nation and south of the medicine line to share his ancestral knowledge. He is a funny and honest man who uses his life story and experiences through his teaching. I would now like, if you could help me, welcome both Brad and Tim, and they'll take it away. Thank you. Um, uh, that was a short version of Tim's biography. I'll, I'll do the extended version. And last summer, he actually woke up and um, he was thankful and blessed with the opportunity to be able to um, get offered some moose meat for the, for the entire winter. Well, he just woke up before his Green Bay Packers lost the game. Um, thank you very much. I'm just going to start out with a, with a song um, that I wrote. It took me five years to write. Um, it's called Ara Hayes, but uh, my Uncle Tim here actually requested it. And um, just to give you the preamble of the story, so I spent a couple weeks right after my auntie, late auntie Lori, uh, went back home and... Uh, I didn't write a rhyme for about five years. And we sat outside by the Anipis. I sat outside, I just went, I'm gonna go write a rhyme. And it, it rained and it just, uh, it was one of those perfect things where it's kind of like, I didn't have to think about what I was writing. It was already written in my mind. And I think about Ira Hayes, if you don't know who he is, um, just use this thing called Google and you can read about him. Uh, he's also, a, He's, in my mind, considered a leader, a warrior, a modern-day warrior. But um, the reason why we're here today is to speak about the unfortunate legacies of residential schools that led to the um, intergenerational trauma of colonialism. And Ira Hayes was an honored war hero who was forgotten about. So this song isn't about him, but it's the sim symbolism of where I was, where I want to go, and where I'll be. Who's gonna sit down and tell it's like storytelling, you know? Yeah, and I just wanna say that uh, every time we speak about the past, it's for us to be able to move to the future in unity. I'm like your counterpart, standing on a mountaintop, a mountain heart, speaking words with spoken word. My speech is art. Sounds absurd nowadays, so I fell apart. I fell apart. I'm spilling words like liquid at a bar. I'm getting nervous, I might take it too far and start talking about some things I wish I never had to do or things that I'm doing now and things that I'm going through. It's like my mind's been darkened with tint. I still see bright, but it gets dark now and then. And negative forces of polarity make it hard to find clarity in a world filled with sin. It's 
a world filled with sin. Born winners usually choose to lose before they often win. That's why I'm usually snoozing when opportunity wants to get in. And my doorbell's always broken. Go figure that. Pass it on my couch, no money. Take a swig of that. It's a lifestyle of an Ara Hayes. These words are medicine for brighter days. Knock, knock, who is it? The medicine is here and it's better than, better than it was back then. So knock, knock, let us in. Knock, knock, let us in. Knock, knock, let us in. The medicine is here and it's better than, better than it was back then. So knock, knock, let us in. I've reached the age where nowadays I like to reminisce. Not about things in the past that I didn't want to miss. Because everything that I missed, it wound up with a twist. Like not chasing my dream to rap, it presented me with a gift. A gift to understand where I was and where I am, man. How did I get here so fast when that wasn't even my plan? Another reason for me to make it and keep believing. Keep moving, continue to do things and leaving. Like don't worry about music and use for change. Uh, I'm living the same. Uh, and all I'm saying is all I'm saying. All I do is all I do, and that's just today. But if we don't line up and stand up, then we'll never get to the future. It's as simple as knocking on the door and opening up for opportunity. It's like, knock, knock, let us in. The medicine is here, and it's better than. Better than it was knock, back knock, let us then. In. The medicine is here, and it's better than. Knock, knock, let better us in. It was back then. Back then. So knock, knock, let us in. But nowadays, nobody knocks on doors. They just text somebody and don't answer the call when you phone call them. So um, congratulations to that, right? Anyways, um, the last couple of years, we've been speaking about um, what happened in residential school. So this year, um, we're going to kind of shift up the conversation about what's happening now. But before we get into a talk from... Um, from the Green Bay, big, Green Bay Packers' biggest fan, <laughs> you know. He only eats cheese that's orange. <laughs> and he was gifted by getting presented with a hey, haka this morning. So, so that's good. That means it's going to be a good day. I'm going to do a song. Um, it's always good to remember where we were so we know where we're going. And this song is a story about my parents' first day of residential school. Um, both my mother and my father, well, he actually... Took my mom as a sister now, so um, she's a generation before. And this, this scenario of the first day of school is still the same. So this song is just about their first day of school. It's called I Remember. And um, I hopefully everybody can remember to look on YouTube because I really need to get those views up. And uh, if you forget, I'll remind you. I actually want to um, say every time that I, I perform this song, I wrote it and it's, it's to commemorate everybody that actually is experiencing learning, the legacy, who went to residence school, and those who don't know about it. You know, you're, you never get nowhere if you're always looking back. Don't miss it, but reminisce the past. I was playing outside just a little man with the world in the palm of my hand. A little kid living life with innocence. I remember everything with images. Red truck and a man in a black robe. They told my mom, call him Father Joe. So we call him Father Joe. I saw a tear in my mother's eye. I let out a cry, but I didn't know why. Piled up in the back of a truck. It had a flatbed on it and the road was rough. My head a cheek, it seemed sick to my stomach. Where are they taking us? Who could have done it? Body is nervous. Why am I leaving? What is the reason? What is the purpose? Now I'm just the last little kid looking for my mother in this life that I live all alone on a road that I'm traveling and all I really want to do is just go home. I remember walking through the doors of the school. It was cool in September. They gave us clothes, put numbers on us, but it said, this will be your name till you're home in December. Put powder on my head, threw me in the shower, then lined us up for bed. Took my braids away. They took a break to win. When I see you taken away, my heart becomes displaced with broken shadows. shadows no time so that's the first, the first night. It's called the Common Residential School Experience. Again. First day. But at the stage. So this is the first night. I 
Words of my late uncle, and my mother, and my yeah. father. Cold night, feeling shackled to my bed. I remember hearing whimpers from the kids, whispers across the room, talking things like, I hope we go home soon. This is just my first night in my life. I think this is my worst night. I'm just a kid and a testing my will. When we hear the jingle of the kids, we'd all lie still. Close my eyes just to block out where I'm living with an image on the cloud that I'm sitting. I wanna fly away. I wanna fly away. Can't cry, can't sleep. They even took away your kid for trying to speak. I remember thinking that we'd never get to meet. Then my mind drifted off, I fell asleep. First morning brought food I couldn't eat If we didn't, we'd get punished in our seats But this is the life that I had to live In residential school as a kid Now it's 60 years later looking back Kind of funny how my mom remembers that All those little things that I can't forget But I'm thankful that you made it every step Through the years, confronting all of the fears My feelings have been adjusted I'm telling it to your ears The elements of my tears The sentiments of the years That I spent with my peers I remember Thank you. Um, that's probably the only song that I sometimes don't remember all of the lyrics, which is ironic. But it is, um, it's a true story, and storytelling is actually, um, it's, the, it's the foundation of us as indigenous people, whether you be a Nakota, Dakota, Lakota, um, any one of the 57 different tribes. So before we get talking about how cool Tim is, how about talking about Pei Chungu Shuga Mani Magiave? Me and Namakota, I'm Magiave, I'm Wopta Talk with you, you know, check your to us by. And my dad is from Little Black Bear. How are you doing today, Tim? I am doing good, Brad. Great. Um, first question I wanted to ask you was, um, so how old were you when you first rapped in front of a crowd? I think I was uh, 59 years old or 60 when you had me rapping. Yeah, and he's only 29 years old. So, you know, the, the irony is... Um, I challenged him to rap in Notre Dame. He's like, I can rap, put on that beat. You know, so um, what that is, is um, when a First Nations person is cheeky and they teases people, that's a sign of love and encouragement. That's what kept us going through this trauma. Everything that goes through our lives is our humor, you know? And I think um, what we wanted to talk about was not his experience as a residential school, it's about why we're here today, and that's to talk about how we can, how we can inspire the youth to um, recognize what happened and, and make a better community through unity, regardless of where you're from. So Tim wanted to speak about something right now, and that's currently what, how, about, how many of our indigenous children and youth um, are actually in foster care and, and um, how we can all help, how you can help by, first of all, recognizing it, but just understanding the importance of... Um, of fostering true, true inspiration and love to these youth. So, have let's start out by like, um, have you ever been like loved and hugged when you were a kid from residential school? Well, <clears throat> that's a good question, Brad. We for, we learned our first form of conditional love from the nuns and the caregivers. So only if we did what they wanted, they were the ones that taught us conditional love. And then many of us confused in life, we, we took that into our relationships. So many homes failed miserably. I just wanted to say that uh, um, even in spite of that, at any age, should you have the desire, you can change gears and start moving in a healthier way. I tell my children, even Brad, my grandchildren, my niece is out in the audience. I've got uh, fellow classmates I went to school with. I can say I love you guys and I really mean it because they're beautiful people in spite of what all they've endured. Great. Um, just, by, uh, just by raising your hands, I can't see anybody in the crowd, but um, how many of you have been told you've been loved as a child from your parents consistently? I see everyone's hand up, but I got bad eyes, so. Yeah, everyone's hands up. See, and I wasn't as well. Like, I think the first time I told my mother I loved her was probably when uh, my uncle introduced me to Tim. The introduction was like, he's a, my uncle was going through some health problems, and I used to just go to ceremony with him. He's like, don't go to anybody, go to Tim. He's a good guy. Why? He goes, 
Because he'll, he'll yell at you and he'll always ask you, do you want, it, uh, you want pain or pleasure? And now I understand that. He's like, don't say anything, just smile. And he goes, because they'll pick on you. And uh, like I said, that's a sign of love. If he never ever picked on me, then something's wrong. So when I told my mom I loved her, the first thing was like, what's wrong? But that's reconciliation. And finally, at her age of 73 years old, she's able to um, openly, openly be in public and talk about it. And it took that long. So um, for the children nowadays, I want you to emphasize the importance of, of how we have to re-engage with the development of, of being proud of themselves. I just wanted to start out by saying I was probably 20... Six, maybe, when I first told my dad. He did actions that I knew he loved me, same with my mother. My mother dies uh, when I was 24, shortly after I got married. But my dad was about 26th. He was grumbling about all the activities on the reserve, who was doing what. And I said, Dad, I love you. He said, smart enough, boy, I'm not a woman. So that's a true story. He grows up in a residential school. I'm fourth generation residential school. So the word love, they showed you through their actions. And now with my sons and my grandsons, I can say I love them and they, they give me a kiss. I'm breaking the mold. So I want something better for our future. I've got some young students in here from Moose Jaw. I want to give it up for Moose Jaw. Come and give me a quick round of applause for Moose Jaw students. <laughs> um, yeah, great. And, and I was in Moose on Friday, so let's give me a bigger round of applause than Tim. <laughs> well, I okay, just, don't then. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, you, you future students are going to be, be, believe it or not, you're going to be our teachers, you're going to be our nurses, you could be our doctors, you could be our, our, uh, our legal people in justice, you could also be politicians. You're going to be the shapers and movers and the more we instill a better seed for something better, the better you're going to create a better tomorrow. So when they signed treaties here in Treaty 4, they said, take our children and educate them, but send us your eldest sons and we'll teach them our way of life. Brad's the baby, the only son, so I've got to kind of mean on him just a little bit in a good way, just to reshape his thought. <laughs> he went there. Yeah, I am. I'm the baby, and I'm <laughs> proud of it. Um, but uh, ironically, um, exactly to add what he said, more importantly, um, you're going to be, whether you don't think it or you believe it, you will be a role model to somebody that's younger than you in the next generation. And what Tim was able to show me when we, I first started going there was, um, it's okay to hug your children and say I love you. And it was, it was awkward at first, but I have um, an adopted son that, it's easy for me now, but it, it's that work. So the, the unity, right? Like, I, I think what's important about um, this day, the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, I don't know why they called it a holiday, because um, the whole day should be actually one of the days you work the hardest at actually learning something that's gonna, gonna strengthen your spirit and belief in, in how we can work together, regardless of any abilities, disabilities, any, any, anxiety that you have because if if you hear something about kids dying like I, I wore this shirt today because um it's been two years now since the first remains of uh, residential schools 200 over 200 children in in british columbia and um it's very important to recognize that uh, that was um shocking to everyone but it wasn't shocking to you was it shocking you didn't know that there was there was remains no because we grew up with this and i think um for everyone that's here today, it's, it's really cool that you came down on what's a holiday, stat holiday, just to listen to us talk about like being a part of historical community foundational beginnings, and that's just listening. So I, was, I just wanted to ask you, Tim, uh, how long did it take you, are you still uncomfortable being in front of a crowd like this? Like I know that he's... he's like my mom, he, at his house, he could be in front of 100 people and yell at everyone, but when it's like this, it's difficult because of that, hey, the, the residential school and just having to listen. 
Like, so how long did it take you to feel comfortable to be able to talk about this? I just wanted you, so we're going to do some stuff in my language. So all you young people, I teach anywhere from kindergarten to grade 12 to even universities, all of the crowd. Say, we are Wachunga, all of you. We are Wachunga, Wachipi. That's our sacred sun dance. So when I, as I denied myself the food and water that we need daily to survive, we'd, we, we go four days with no food and water. So I had lots of paranoias with the non-Indian. Even the Indians that abused me attended residential school. So it took me a long time praying and actually piercing to the tree, asking the grandfathers to help me come out of my insecurities. So many people go to therapists, many people join churches, many people go to AA, NA, whatever they may want to do. I go back to my spirituality because it has a connection to the past. It also helps me look at it. And I'm also in a point where I'm looking at where I am today because I want a better tomorrow. So when I'm looking at these things, all these ceremonies give me that inner strength. And I've done some other things like Toastmasters and I did some residential school research. So now I can go into any crowd and I'm comfortable. I'm cheeky. I like to have fun. I'm teasing most of the staff here at the museum. I take them as family. They take me the same way. But I developed that relationship. It just doesn't happen. We have to work at it. And... Um it, the, what's really cool is because he said he's fourth generation residential school survivor, so he's one of the first generations of residential school survivors that are speaking like this, and I think that's really cool. So let's put our hands together for Tim for being able to just come up and share, <laughs> share everything, you know. Um, when you talk about support groups like that, support groups, um, I'm going to ask you this. Uh, when you went to, down for the first time, Dad, um, can you tell them the story about how, why you went there, and how it wasn't your, it wasn't your target and goal to be who you are today, like as a Sundance chief. Really, what I wanted to do. There's another word I want you all to say: N E T P. N E T P. N E T P. All I really wanted to do was run sweat for my family and those that wanted to come but you have to earn those rights. So my nephew, he come, he had some, his own mental anguish like we all do. We are, we're all faced with challenges through our life and we're all giving them whether we want them or not. But he came to that sweat lodge and it, that's our university. That's our oldest form of prayer. So I, I raised that because my grandsons are participating in the ceremonies when Brad said, you don't realize it, but I've got grandsons that are watching my every move. I was at Sundance. I had long hair. It was up just about up to my belt line. I brushed my late wife's hair once, and she brushed mine for 35 years. But when we lose the people we love, when Brad was singing about the, they cut my, took my braids away, the closer the loved one, that's where we cut our hair. Now that I'm a bachelor, I like having short hair. It's <laughs> easier to keep. If I forget shampoo, I can use bar soap, and I look as good as I look today. <laughs> How's that? Because I forgot shampoo. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. He's like, I'll, I'll tell you this. So he didn't mention it. He's, he's trying to be um, stoic on this like all of us do. Really, he actually just went to Sundance because his brother wanted him to go hang out with him, and he ended up having to go into Sundance, and that's where it came. So... What do you think you're doing to Konshalan, Unchimoka, that's Mother Earth, and, and the Creator? They put you in a position where it's like a different path you did not expect. Just like when I went to go see him, he was cool. He came to my house, came with tobacco. Um, yeah, come out and sweat. Yeah, come out, we'll visit. It was wintertime. First time I went out there by myself. Okay, come out here. Come out and visit. And <laughs> it's like half of a football field. He's like, okay, you got a shovel. <laughs> that's, that was my visiting. I had to shovel to get everything ready. But I was kind of mad at first, but then I realized, that's kind of cool. You know, I got that opportunity. Um, that was the first introduction to going with him. So I understand the importance of, of working hard and, 
and doing things. And I'm thankful. Thanks for, like, not letting me and my son chop wood because you just watch me. Like, look at these guys. They do their hunting at Safeway. Real city boys. <laughs> <laughs> they made it look like chopping wood painful. <laughs> yeah. But I would just sit there and smile at him and say, hit it a little harder, but on the You're edge of the log. You're going to hurt yourself. You're, like, You're going to hurt yourself. I'll show you to chop wood. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a value that I, I remember. is like my dad. Uh, my dad. He, it's his birthday. It's his birthday. My dad's up there. I can't see him. Happy birthday again. It was his birthday the other day. And uh, he's like, you, you know, like work when you work, the ethic of, of following through with doing stuff just because you have to. And I'm, I'm 45 now, and I'm slowly starting to learn that. Well, I said, I got to do that. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to move along. Do stuff like that, which um, is, is something that it is very important. Is it not like, um, do you think it's harder for children nowadays and youth because of cell phones and the internet? when it comes to like understanding who you are? I just wanted to say that we live in a time of convenience. We were talking, the girls were teasing me, they were calling me a hoarder at sweat yesterday. But I grew up in a very poor and impoverished way where lots of times we would go help the neighbors weed their garden, cut hay, make posts, make fence, bring their hay in. So you had to work, even though I was an orphan, my, bra my parents break up when I was 18 months old. And uh, my, so my parents are broke up. So living in my nation, I used to have to go around help some of the elders weed their garden, do these things, and they were poor. But all they may have to give you is a bowl of beans and bannock, but that was your meal. In modern times, you young people don't know what work is. When we're getting ready for these ceremonies, we have to go and haul our wood, haul our rocks. I do enough in the fall so that it'll last me till the next fall. But you're getting ready for that ceremony. Today's people, they don't want to work any harder than they have to because it's physical. But what you don't realize is when you're putting that kind of energy into getting these ceremonies ready, you're also getting ready for the prayer for the year. So we live in different times and we have to adopt. I know Brad came out one, one year. Hey, 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 no, no, we're not going there. We're not going to call this No, one. come on now. Wait now. <laughs> Brad came out that one year to build a Sundance. Remember? We own Wachunga with Chippy. Real fast. Come on. We own Wachunga with Chippy. He come and work for, for us You're for going a there, week. Right? You're going to tell for him a week. One. For a week. And then he went home and rest for two weeks. And then we seen him another week. And then he went home and rest for another two weeks. But in, but in the meantime, there were many, many people coming from across Turtle Island, both in the U.S. and Canada. There were well over 350 people in my yard. So when you do those types of things, you don't mind talking to all of them. So when I go into these circles, I just kind of think about all of my relatives that are trying to learn something better. There's lots of good things you could be doing, like blanket exercises. We got the grade 11, grade 12 students here from Moose Jaw. They're doing the native studies, the treaties. So they should be inviting in survivors to come and help with the content. We can speak to the true reality of that. We have to learn from the past. We inherit our past. But that was then, this is now, like I said, on child welfare. So I'm the board member for my nation overseeing the children's needs. But I've also worked in child welfare and prevention. I want to acknowledge my relatives at the back of the room that are with Namron Housing. We're trying to do stuff on homelessness. It's in Moose Jaw, it's in Regina, it's in Saskatoon, it's in Ottawa. It's, it's everywhere. In Quebec, everywhere. it's everywhere. But we have lots of kids raised up in foster care. So when the province ages these young people out, they're turned out at the age of 16, there's no, there's no help for them. But another, and I'm also working at the university, I'm calling out our teachers or Young teachers, if you have somebody in your classroom with a learning disability, which I had, I was dyslexic. I've had my eardrums broke on both sides from not getting it right. So I speak loud. I really don't need the mic. I could fill up the, the audience with just without the mic. But the point I'm trying to make is these people may have learning difficulties. My boy was going to school. He's fifth generation in White Calf Collegiate. Education was strongly promoted. He had an 85 average there. He was smoking cigarettes. Of course, we know then, even then, the weed was around. Now they legalize it. So I brought him home. He wasn't going to play hockey. I said, don't, 
don't play hockey. You're going to save me money. But he played that noise. So I just wanted to say that they put him in a modified special needs class. So we have nations of people that we put through the system on modification and our streets are filling up with them. Let's change the way we do our business. That, that's great to add to that point. So if you, if you don't understand what that is, um, I went to a school here in Regina. I grew up, um, I went to kindergarten in 1983. And um, I, Told my dad, like, I went over to my friend's house a block away. He, he had all these Dr. Seuss books. And I was like, Dad, I want some books. He's like, you got a whole bunch of books right there. Read those. I was like, those are Dr. Seuss. They're encyclopedias, which is really cool. Because I just started reading encyclopedias, the randomest facts. You know, like how many um, states have the same first letter and last letter. It's things like that. And I go talk with the teachers about it. Like, how do you know this stuff? But that modified, that modified teaching structure, they would take me out of my class and put me with the other First Nations kids, there's about four or five of us, and we'd have to read books like um, The Cat in the Hat, Green Eggs and Ham, and I'm like, why do I have to, they're like, well, you should practice this. An assumption of illiteracy, which is kind of funny because um, that's where I started learning how to rap, I think, you know, like subconsciously. The rhymes are on point. So Dr. Seuss, if you guys have ever read that, you've all read rap music, you don't even know it. Dr. Seuss, there's Dr. Dre, you know? <laughs> you know, it's like green eggs and ham. I've never even seen green eggs, but I've seen ham. But those rhyme styles are the simple structure that we all understand as, as a learning ability. But I was reading stuff about Malcolm Little back in 1963, organizing, um, organizing protests, who became Malcolm X. And I'd be talking about it. And the teacher's like, how do you know that? I'm like, well, the only books we have are encyclopedias because there was no face chat, snap talk, and, and um, face space, and Instagram, all that, all that cool interweb stuff. We didn't have that, so we just read the books. And then you dog ear the book, and you're like, I gotta remember this. And the dictionary is another one. So um, for teachers out there and educators, or those that are planning on becoming a teacher, it's very important to communicate with the students, right? So that's what you're talking about, like communicate, like don't get, don't tell them what to do, ask them. He's talking about Dr. Seuss. <laughs> oh, you gonna rap now? No, no, <laughs> just wait, I well in a minute if you challenge me. But Dr. Seuss wrote a book on moose meat. Would you eat your moose meat with me? Would you eat your moose meat in a tree? Or what do we have to do no before way. you see? You just made that up, didn't you? I'm just biting them with moose meat. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, and to that point, um, we know that the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation is on September 30th. But reconciliation, Tim, in the simplest form, how do you understand? What is reconciliation? Just the simplest form, not like ethnicities or anything, the, the term itself. What do you understand it as? Well, I, I, I see it a little bit further. I mean, it's okay. We have one of our museums, as long as the sun shines, the river flows, and the grass grows. That sounds very beautiful, but I see it more like reconciliation. What are we gonna do as individuals? You didn't write the policies, neither did I. I had to live through them. What can we do as, as cities, communities, nations of people to make a better tomorrow? For our children, for our great-grandchildren, Got to remember now, I'm a great grandpa. I'm too young to be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, that's the first time he's like, he's older now. The first time he said that was five years ago. I'm too young to be great. He's just getting greater. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's like I like uh, teasing him because if I don't tease him, then then he like teases me more. So I got another question for you, Tim. So um, first of all, I want to thank you for 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 making it a little bit of a better story. I'm gonna really tell you, when I first met him, he's, he's being cordial and he's trying to be a professional. But really, he invited me out that day to help build Sundance Arbor. And um, they're like 25 years, 30 years older than me. And he's like, yeah, um, I heard you almost passed out there. Like it was like we're chopping out trees. These 65 year old guys are like just outworking me for 10 hours in plus 35 weather. I'm like, pouring water on my head. I'm like, uh, like, you don't look good, Brad. Go sit in the truck. Thank you. 
you know. And then the next time I went out, I was like, yeah, I'll cook. I'll cook for us. I'll cook soup. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, I think it's about time I better go in and cook. He's like, it's only 11 o'clock. We just started two hours ago. <laughs> so that work ethic stuff is it, it, very cool to actually um, have that mentality. And back to what I asked about, like, the Internet and stuff, how can the Internet as well as cell phones help our young ones to find their own identity? What, what would your suggestion be? Well, there's lots of things you can look up with your phones and the computers. I think the more you educate yourself on indigenous issues and what hap really happened here in Canada, the further you're going to be. Not that we're looking for anybody to feel sorry for us. What we need to build is a good understanding. It's not happening. With a good understanding comes change in thought. We have to realize, like with my dad, he's seen the world in a particular way. I couldn't break his thought no matter what I did, so I just have to respect it. So having said that, with your young minds, you need to educate yourself on the issues at hand. Right now we're dealing with homelessness in Regina. We need to put our energy into making something for better for our street people. They're dealing with historical trauma through social services, education. Nobody was there for them, so we need to create a better avenue Look up the, the, the terms on your phone or your computers on it. historical trauma. How are we going to make a better tomorrow if you don't, like you hear me speaking, but in your own circles, how are you going to change that thought? That's a good point. And because um, I've been thinking about that a lot, how I could, like my, my son, yeah, he was what, how old when we first met? He was like eight, seven or eight. And Tim, Tim was wearing this leather jacket, and he looked like Billy Jack, the karate guy who was a native with his big braids and stuff. And then uh, he didn't smile at all. He was just, I thought he was a mad at me or something, but uh, I realized that's how it is. It's like a professional, a professional, and he just, he adopted uh, my son, my adopted son as his Tokoja, which is grandchild. And uh, now he's 18. And he's been around Tim so long. And the funniest thing is he would always yell at me. What are you doing? Do this? And then I was like, he's always yelling at me. He's like, what? He always says that he's deaf. That's why he he's just talking loud because he can't hear anything. That's how he looks at you. And he's seen you yet the other day. He had the, it was in the art gallery. He's like, mushroom. I seen mushroom Tim. He's like, it's good. And uh, that, what you're talking about, his cell phone, I used to always challenge him. If you're going on your cell phone, you're on the internet, find, just learn one thing about, about First Nations, about treaty, about everything to do with being proud of who he is. And uh, that's the encouragement that you're talking about, right? So for teachers out there, make a new teaching plan. Yeah, the teachers, you guys are the biggest gang in the world, really. You, you teach each other how to teach. And we remember our teachers. Everybody, do you remember your... Your, first, your grade one teacher, your grade one nun, or who, do you remember who it is? My uh, grade two teacher was Sister Gray Ice when I went to school in Lebrecht, but she started teaching catechism, so she was in her religious studies. And the only reason I remember Sister Gray Ice well is she wasn't really a, a, a mean nun. She was more empathetic and more kind, more loving, but the others weren't. So uh, those ones I kind of blocked and forgot. So that would be the only teacher I could remember. But she also taught us re, uh, 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 catechism. So they followed Father Lacombe's ladder. Anything Indian, like the sweat lodge, the powwow, the pipe, we were sure to go to hell. So that's where that historical trauma started through Father Lacombe's ladder. But having said that, I'm fourth generation residential school survivor. My grandmother made sure we all had Catholic names and we were baptized. So because she made the change in her day, she thought it was best for all the rest. So I didn't baptize any of my children. If they want to get baptized to whatever faith they want, that's their choice. Fair enough. But uh, on, on the other side of it, from a indigenous worldview, how young was... Uh, Joe, when you, Joe's his son, he was a teacher as well, 
Um, how young was he when he, you, you went first into the Chouette? Him and my nephew I used to keep. They were starting to come to sweat with me since they were age uh, four and five. They were terrible doormen. They'd be courting <laughs> over who's going to open the door. So I started bringing them in, showing them how hot it was, and then the little guys would go to sleep and sweat. The heat didn't bother them. So they were tough. But Brad on the end. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, anyways, um, the next question that I have. <laughs> I can yeah. turn them into a two-foot ball. Oh, no, it's awesome. I don't even know. It's like I was sitting there this one. It's dark. I'm like, if you get the opportunity, you really, really feel, um, feel you want to experience that. That's true. Very important. One of the rights of us being Indigenous. Tim's open to bringing people out. He'll take it easy on, on you because uh, that's what he says he will. He will. He didn't do that to me. I remember it was dark, and he's like, stop your crying. Where are you going? I don't know how you see me. I was trying to, like, just run over out the door. It's so hot. Get back in your seat. I'm like, oh, it's going to be over right away. <laughs> like, I also remember that. But then um, by, by repetition, by actually your prayer gets stronger, your belief, your singing and songs and stuff, like, that's how I started learning my language again. I experienced what was two years ago when Sean, like, our, our friend Sean, he was exact. I just felt what he was going through. I can't do this. I can't. And I just simply just said, hey, just relax and breathe. Just like he told me it's going to be over soon. And um, that's, that was a moment of what I would call proud of my identity and re reconciliation for me just growing up as an urban kid who, who actually used to think camping was getting a hotel room. You know, like, like that. It's like, um, oh, we're going on vacation? That's going to the reserve for me now, you know, so that's good. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I have another question for you, uh, which I think is cool. So Tim mentioned that he, how we cut our hair and stuff when you're in the morning and stuff. Um, and now for you, he's a retired, he's what you would call um, professors. They call um, emeritus, say, like Professor Emeritus or whatever it is. That's him, Sundance Chief Retired Emeritus. Uh, right now, like... Um, after 27 or 28 years of always having your summers filled with going down south and preparing everything, um, what's important to you now just to not have to worry about that one, two weeks of, of every summer? Like, what, what do you look forward to? Well, even though I'm retired, I was still encouraged to come down. So I did go this last summer. But uh, that ceremony is very near and dear. When I left uh, residential school, I had a very low self-esteem. It was easy to fall victim to alcohol and the drugs were a part of that. So I challenge young people, if you can keep that out of your life because they become very addictive. So it was very easy to use those substances to cope with my reality. So when I'm talking about a historical trauma, all the times I had my ears, eardrums broke and damaged the alcohol was a way to numb that pain. So many of our street people that you see on the street do not want to be drug addicts or those types of things. They want a better reality. I keep going back to that because I'm really trying to make sure that our audience is getting the full impact or a good understanding of historical trauma. There's uh, only two people in Regina I know talking about this. There's a Suzanne uh, Walker teaching at FNU. She's talking about historical trauma. And then there was Harry Denemy. But we identified that when we did some residential school research. There's layers of trauma that we need to be able to walk with our people. Because when I did the overseeing some residential school research, we actually stabilized people that had used substances from they left from when they left. So I kind of got off uh, off topic. I wanted to make sure I fleshed that out good. Yeah, um, that's the humble, humble um, stories of him saying that he did have a learning disability, but he did a lot of research for stuff. Like, um, what, did it help you heal when you were researching researching residential schools, and did it help you personally? It helped me understand my parents. My uh, <clears throat> mother went to uh, an Anglican school up in Gordon's. My father went to a Catholic school in Labrette. She had to denounce her Anglican, even though they came from the same place and be baptized Catholic before they could wed. 
So uh, yes, it helped me understand my parents. It helped me understand my siblings, which in turn helped me understand my nations. And it helped me understand many nations because in Muscopedian alone, out of one family, one boy went to a Protestant school, the other one went to an Anglican school, one went to a Catholic school. So that's a good part of our divisions why people aren't united today. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Uh, I just really did think about like, even though people live on the reserve, I would just want to say this for everybody that's non-Indigenous, a good point of reconciliation is really work hard to not assume that if they have braids, they know that they're traditional, or if they don't have braids and they have like short hair, like Tim's from the barber shop, that uh, he don't know nothing, he's assimilated. We started out by asking what reconciliation was. Reconciliation basically is just making a bad relationship better. It's kind of like when you argue with your sibling or your best friend, you don't talk for a while, then you, you reconcile. But more importantly to me, um, I got asked this question, similar to like, get over it, by, um, by one of the community members that's actually uh, one of the leaders. Is, How come I never see it protests? And uh, I was very direct. Uh, there's no, um, he, Tim gave me the confidence to be direct and just say what, I, say what I mean with conviction. I was like, I don't protest. I contest protests because you can only truly have a spirit that will encourage and, and actually exude that pure pride if your relationships at home are good. So that's why I ask you about hugging, like saying I love you, kiss like he kisses his children, say I love you, and I learned that. I do it to my kid because breaking that cycle. And um, my late uncle who introduced me to Tim told me, you can't do any of that stuff as long as you make your all your relationships with your family, your sister, your mother, father, and your cousins, you don't have bad, bad relationships, you don't argue. He goes, that is the most important part of, of living. So he said, because we're just here for this long and for the rest of our life. He goes, you don't want to go see your cousins when you're still arguing with them and stuff. He's like, make that's reconciliation. So as long as you can make your relationships stronger, better, filled with more love with the, your family and your friends around you, that's a reconciliation right there because there's no need to worry about this guy said that or did you hear about this because we didn't have gossip. And being humble and being able to say that and believe in what you're saying, that's the most important thing. You all have a passion. You all actually have something you love. Maybe you're shy, like he was shy. Maybe um, you like drawing, color, or painting. Maybe you like reading. Maybe you actually like um, doing tiki talkies or whatever they're called. You know, like doing video. Is that what's called, tiki talkies? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever it is, I just heard about it. Heard about it on the radio. Um, but yeah, whatever your creative ability is, stick with that. That's your passion. That's what you do. It's like, if, if it wasn't for me just rapping consistently, I wouldn't be here talking with you guys because I'd, I'd probably not be confident about stuff. So I'm going to do a song here. I, I, I'm looking for Craig. or I don't know how much time we have left and stuff, but we wanted to keep it on a different type of uh, emotion today and keep it happy. So I'm going to do this four times. When I say treaty, you say four. Treaty? Oh, come on. It's, you said, you're not at school. Come on. Treaty? 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 Cool. All right. And thank you for, for doing that. This song's called What's the Worst? And I wrote it actually thinking about, like, what's the worst thing that would have happened if I, uh, if I didn't rap? So it's just about rap. You know, it's about, like, following your passion. So, um, Turn to the person beside you right now and say you're awesome on the count of three. One, two, three. Come on. Don't be shy. That was not awesome. One, two, three. You're awesome. Thank you. You're awesome. Okay, cool. Ready? I'm not going to challenge you to rap, Pri. I'm not going to make you rap, Tim, um, because you, you might be better than me. You guys ready? You guys want, can I rap for you guys? No? Yeah? Okay, cool. And um, before I start this song, ready to close it out, I want you guys just to really uh, put your hands together for the organizers of the, this um, opportunity for us to have this talk and continuing to progress and learn with each other. Cool. 
Shout out to Murky Waters. He's a teacher. Um, when we started rapping, nobody was rapping, making beats, so we just hung out together and we were never going to go to school. And we had a goal if we didn't do something by a certain age, we're going to go to university. So we both did. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? You know, welcome to, welcome to Regard 24. But now my guy, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Feeling like a million bucks when I'm rapping. Got a body full of aches and pains from year after year after year against the grain. And when I hear that you hear, am I the same or do I see into the clear from the fear with the fame? I don't know, it's just something to speculate. But I'm excited, kind of like it's a second date. Had to pause for a moment to rejuvenate. Clear my soul, get rid of my anger and hate. Now I'm clear though. See the light at the end of the tunnel, no need to fumble the way of fear hope. Fell down when it hurt, clocked out of the rubble, now no trouble with work. What's the worst? What's the worst? What's the worst that can happen? I've been down in the dirt, fell down when it hurt, climbed out of the rubble, now no trouble with work. What's the worst? What's the worst? What's the worst that can happen? Right? What's the worst? What's the worst? What's the worst? What's the worst that can happen? Yep, this trash got me thinking back When I used to be analog, it would crack a jack When I used to analyze all my raps and The only thing I wanted was my name on the map But now it's gone, moving on along my life path But my soul in a song, now I can fight back Whether or whether or not you like that I ain't going nowhere, no need to write back Ups and downs, downs and ups Drinks and cups, drugs are tough Enough's enough, call the bluff on the world And show the fake what you're made of I got my heart full of heaven in I'm new to my surroundings, so let me settle in. Kick back, tell stories, start laughing. What's the worst that can happen? Been down in the dirt, fell down when it hurt. Climbed out of the rubble, now no trouble with work. What's the worst? What's the worst? What's the worst that can happen? If I know more, yeah, you know, it's a two Thank you, Craig, and uh, the World Sask Museum for allowing us to be able to um, come up here and hang out again for another year around the sun. So make some noise. I'm going to invite Bree up on stage and... Uh, Tim, once again, thank you. You know, you can continue to inspire. And, and one thing is, um, I really want to say, if you really want to know something, somebody wanted to ask something, whatever, you're too shy, the only way you're going to learn is asking. You know, don't be, don't be afraid to ask anybody that you meet about anything indigenous. Because if we don't know, we don't know. We'll say we don't know. But that, that's good. That uncomfortable feeling, as Tim always says, if it doesn't feel uncomfortable, then it's not reconciliation. So thank you. Thank you, Tim. And now Bree is going to wrap for us. Thanks, Bob. All right. Well, thank you so much, Knowledge Keeper Petra and Brad. Just one more round of applause. It's... Uh, you know, we really appreciate, this is I think the third year, maybe more, that you guys have done this for us. It can't be easy every year doing this, so we really do appreciate it. Um, one of the things you said, um, Knowledge Keeper Petra, is, you know, understanding brings change of thought. And I think, I want to thank all of you for coming uh, this morning so that you can understand more and we keep learning and the more we're, we'll learn um, the more we'll understand and then the more change will happen so I really believe in that you know the more we we learn um, we're gonna understand more and um, you know we'll all be better for that so again thank you so much for coming I also wanted to just uh, thank again the Saskatchewan Teachers Federation for allowing us to continue these conversations we do have these kinds of conversations throughout the year. We try and um, do different kinds of educational things. We have our solstice series that the Friends puts on, um, and we try and or really incorporate learning um, Indigenous culture and understanding as much as we can in the programs that we provide. So. Um, so thank you all for coming. Have a great rest of your day. And please, thanks again to Knowledge Keeper Petra and Brad for being here again for us. <laughs>